when I come into the room, I always come and have a hello to everybody. And I like to have a big happy smiley face because I reckon I'm one of the happiest people I've ever met and I always look for the other happy people in the world. <laughs> so when I met you or if I saw you today, I smiled at you. And some of you, thank you so much, you smiled back, you went, it was like, cool, another happy person. <laughs> some of you gave me what I call the I'm not going to be rude smile, which I really appreciate because it's good manners. So when somebody smiles at you, you don't really feel like it, but it's, not, it's rude not to smile back, so you do this. And I get that and I appreciate it because you're being not rude. However, some of you, when I smiled at you today, you kind of went and moved on. <laughs> and I get that too because I've been 13, I've been 14, I've been 15, which is the age of most of you in the room today. Would that be right? Yeah. None of you have been 51. And if an old lady like me had come to my school event when I was 13 and gave me a huge big smile, I would have thought to myself, who's this old lady and what the hell is she doing here? So I get that. What you probably don't get though is why I'm here. And I'm, it's a very special event and a very special day for me because when I was 13, 89, my life completely changed. So I know that you can change your life and make your life absolutely amazing at 13, 14, 15. Does that sound good? So here's what happened to me. I went to a private boarding school in Melbourne, and some of you are going to know it because I went to Lilydale Adventist Academy in Melbourne. And back then, you couldn't listen to rock music and you couldn't dance. It was against the school rules. There were some nasty people at my school. I'm sure there's no nasty people at your school because I'm sure that if there are nasty people at your school, you would shut it down. However, when I was 13, I was overweight. I had pimples on my face. And I had buck teeth. I could put a 20 cent coin between my two front teeth. My last name, my maiden name is Cesarin, S-Z-E, which the delightful people who were nasty at my school changed from Cesarin to Caesarian. So my nickname for a little while was Caesarian. And then some really nice people at my school changed that to abortion. Oh. <laughs> so my nickname at school was abortion. I was overweight, pimples on my face and buck teeth. And then, to top that all off, the two most gorgeous girls in the school, and I'm sure you've got these girls at your school, the most popular, the smartest, the best at sport, the best looking, the biggest boobies, and the boys love them. <laughs> and the girls wanted to be like them. I know that you know people like that. Well, for some reason, these two girls didn't like me very much. So they did a survey around my school. There's 450 people at my school, and they went around with a bit of paper. And they said, tick the box if you like, Rowie, and tick the box if you don't. If you have ever in your life felt insignificant, ugly, fat, unimportant, or nobody likes you, oh, I get that. I went home that day with a big pile of paper. See, Rowena, everybody hates you. And I walked out of the school with my shoulders as you would like this thinking to myself, I'm not going back to school, I'd rather die. Close my bedroom door and burst into tears, wouldn't you? However, I'm not particularly intelligent, but I'm really street smart. And I gave this a real logical, common sense thinking process and thought to myself, are these drop girls trying to make me happy or are they trying to hurt me? Which one? They're trying to hurt me. Now, I don't particularly, I'm not one of these people that when I win something, I jump up in the air and yell and scream. I'm not that kind of a person. So I don't particularly care about winning, but I bloody hate losing. <laughs> and at that time, when I looked myself in the mirror, I knew that those girls were winning and I was losing because they had control of how I felt. I was miserable and sad and upset because two other people were trying to make me feel that way, but I was allowing them to, and I need you to take that on board. Nobody can hurt you unless you allow them to. No one can make you feel unimportant or fat or ugly unless you allow them to. So I made a decision that day, and these are the, these are the two most favourite people in my life now because they made my life amazing. I'm so thankful for them. I decided because of those two nasty girls that I was going to become, are you ready for this? You even have to stand different when you say it. 
I looked myself in the mirror and I said, I'm going to become a powerful, passionate, positive person. <laughs> Just turn to the person next to you and say that. I am a powerful, passionate, positive person. Go. <laughs> in this room right now, I recognise you because remember, I'm, a lot, I'm very much older than all of you and I recognise some of you who don't want to say that because it's not cool. Like, I'm not going to say powerful, passionate, positive person because that's not cool. But when you say it, even if you say it without any energy, you feel better. But I didn't just decide to say it, I decided to be it. I decided from 13 that I was going to be a powerful, passionate, positive person. Now, the other interesting thing was, and some of you today will really get this, one of the things that the girls bullied me about was my school uniform. At our school, at the academy, we had, uh, t uh, had to wear a French knot tie, had to wear a blazer, your skirt had to be long past your knees, you had to have shiny shoes, clean fingernails and nice hair. That was really important. My father used to, t he, I'm very, very happy he taught me this. He said, be proud of who you are and wear your clothes with pride. He taught me to dress well. So I got like a bully for that at school. What are you wearing your shiny shoes for? So here's what happens. Powerful, passionate, positive girl next morning gets out of bed. No more dragging myself out of bed. Because powerful, passionate, positive people, what do they do to get out of bed? They jump out of bed. I put my uniform on beautifully. I did my wings and not tie perfectly. I shined my fingernails, I shined my shoes, and I rocked back into school as a powerful, passionate, positive person. Now I walked out like this. This is how I walked back in. See, powerful, passionate, positive people don't walk, they strut. <laughs> I walked straight up to the two girls, I looked in the eye and I said, thank you very much. Look at my face. Do you think they were expecting that? No. <laughs> but I'm so grateful for what those girls did because sometimes, and I think I'm almost thinking it's all the time. You need something really awful to happen to stop you from being average. And average is my least favourite word because average means that you're not doing your best. Because you can't do your best to be average, can you? No. Being your best means you are the very best person that you can be, not the average person. So here's what happened. I don't remember whether it was two weeks or three weeks, but it's a very short period of time after this happened to me. We had a free water out of the sky day. Now, some people would call that rain. I think that's really boring. <laughs> so there's some free water coming out of the sky in Melbourne. I found out yesterday from a farmer in Queensland that they don't call it free water out of the sky. They call it liquid gold. So don't ever whine about the rain. That's what I'm sharing with you. Be really excited that there's free water coming out of the sky. Anyway, so it's a free water out of the sky day in Melbourne, so we couldn't do outdoor sport. We had to come inside. It's 450 people inside. These two people walk into our room, about, probably about the same size as this, maybe a bit bigger. They put music in a tape deck. Most of you won't know what that is. And we started doing this to music. We started doing, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no about, I'm not sure that was the song, but it was something about that era. And we started exercising to music at a school where you couldn't listen to rock music and you couldn't dance. I peed my pants. I was so excited, I couldn't believe it. Now, I told you I'm not that intelligent, but I'm really street smart. And I was street smart enough to know that those people were getting paid to do that. So my father sent me to private boarding school in Melbourne to become a lawyer. But I decided that day that I was going to become an exercise instructor. There is a time in your life when your life will flash before your eyes. Because this is the only negative thing you're going to get from me all day. Only negative all day, you ready? We're all going to die. <laughs> and you're laughing, that's awesome. <laughs> we don't often don't know how we're going to die, when we're going to die, and we often don't have control over it. But here's what we have full control of, how we're going to live. And what's going to happen is this. There's two epic moments in your life. The first one is the day you were born. Epic moment, just say yes, Rowan. If you don't think so, ask your mother. <laughs> Second epic moment in your life is when you find out why. And I found out at 13. I decided that day when I did exercise to music 
But there was never going to be a little girl at 13 ever again that felt fat and ugly and horrible. Because I was going to make sure that everyone in the world was going to exercise and be healthy and fit and strong and exercise to music. Woo! So I went to my school principal. Some of you may know him. His name was Tony Bartlett. And I said, excuse me, sir. How much are you paying those people to teach us exercise? He said, $30. Why? I said, I'll do it for $25. Now, as a private boarding school, I didn't need to save $5. <laughs> but he believed in me, the same as you have teachers who believe in you. That's why you're here today, because somebody at your school saw that you have leadership skills. You might currently be leading people in the wrong direction, but somebody has recognised <laughs> that you have leadership skills. So they've brought you here today to make sure that you lead people in the right direction. Well, my school principal said to me, Rowie, we'll give you the opportunity to teach exercise. Now I knew that I was going to be an aerobic instructor for the rest of my life. I knew that I was going to be, that, that was my career path. That was the epic moment in my life. And I'm asking you to think about this really carefully. Because your next epic moment, you've already had the first one, you're already here, <laughs> is when you find out why you were born. Now some of you already know, because some of you have asked you today, what are you going to be? Princess. Her name is Princess. I met today a South African princess. That's her name. She's going to be a brain surgeon. When I asked her, what are you going to do? She didn't hesitate. She just said, I'm going to be a brain surgeon. Not, I want to be, maybe, hopefully, eventually. She just said, I'm going to be a brain surgeon. And I get that because when I was 13 and somebody said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to be a fitness instructor. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to get everybody in the world healthy and fit and strong. So my school principal said, yes, Roe, you can teach exercise. So I had two small challenges. How many of you have had some small challenges in your life before? Hands up. Great. Those of you that haven't, you'll just have to pretend. How many of you, and this is a very interesting question, I want you to think about for a bee's willy of time, how long is a bee's willy? <laughs> that's not very long. For a bee's willy of time, I want you to think about the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Just for a little tiny time, think about the worst thing that's ever happened to you, the biggest challenge you've ever had. Now I've got a really important question. Have you met people that have had a, or know of people that have got a worse challenge than you've ever had? Yes or no? I'm sure you've met some people today. You think your life's pretty tough. Adam's got one leg. You met somebody who's got no arms. How do you wipe your bottom when you've got no arms? Who thought that when they heard that? Can you imagine what a tough life that would be? And I'm sharing that with you because all of you have, you at some time will feel sorry for yourself. But when you're feeling sorry for yourself, think to yourself, are there other people that have had tougher times than me? And the answer is yes or no. Yes. Now, are there people that have had tough times who fall down in a screaming heap, whinge, moan and complain, carry on, be silly? Yes or no? Yes. Next question. Are there people who have had big challenges in their life, bigger than yours, that have become powerful and stronger and better and nicer, more respectful people because of what happened to them? Yes or no? So we often can't decide whether things, something good or bad is going to happen, but we get to decide how we react or respond to it, yes or no. Just say yes, Rowie. Yes. So, I shared with my father, who spoke seven languages fluently. He was a very intelligent man. Went home to my dad, and I said, Dad, I'm going to become an aerobic instructor, not a lawyer. Seven languages he swore at me in. <laughs> swear, swear, swear over my dead body. Swear, swear, swear over my dead body. However, now I had my father against me, the whole school hated me, and I had one other small challenge. I didn't know how to teach exercise to music. Small challenge. But my school principal had said, yes, you can, and we're going to pay you $25 to do it. So I had to overcome that my father didn't want me to be an exercise instructor. I had to overcome that the school hated me and I had to get in front of the whole school as a fat, chubby, pimply-faced kid and teach exercise. And then this other small challenge, I don't know how to do it. However, today I'm here because I've got the A, B, C, D, E of how to do this, how to have a successful, happy, amazing life. Now I'm gonna go back one step. The day that those girls bullied me with the bits of paper, I decided to set a very realistic goal. Now, I'm sure you've heard that, haven't you? Set realistic goals, have you heard that? 
So I decided I was 13 now. By the time I was 50, I decided I was going to be really wealthy, have a career that I loved. I was going to be in a great relationship. I was going to have travelled the world, live in a beautiful home, have a beautiful car, have as many dogs as I wanted, because my mother always told me I couldn't have dogs because they were dirty. So I decided that I would just have lots and lots of dogs. And my life was going to be amazing. You've decided all of those things, haven't you? See? I'm with the right crowd. Year nines know what it's all about. But I had a small challenge again. Because when you're 13 and you set the goal to have all of those things happening by the time you're 50, I, I wasn't sure if it was possible. So I thought I'll go and talk to some 50-year-olds. See how they're going? You're laughing already. <laughs> So I found myself some 50 year olds. Now if you ask me how old I am, I'll tell you I'm 50 years young. But I met some 50 year olds. Because I said, how are you? And here was their answer. Not too bad. Wish it was Friday. I was a bit shocked. I said, you must be really healthy, fit and strong then. At 50? No, I'm a bit fat. What? <laughs> well, you must be in a great relationship. No, my husband's an ass. Really? What about your career? You must love what you do. No, my boss is an ass too. I hate my job. <laughs> well, as leaders in 2016, I'm setting you up for a big challenge today and I need the people in this room to seriously consider taking this on board. If an overweight, pimply faced, buck teeth little 13 year old ever comes to you when you're 50, and says, is it possible to be healthy, fit and strong, have a career that you love, travel the world, be in an amazing relationship and love what you do every day? What are you going to say? Yes. Yes. Hell yes. 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 Thank you. So all we're going to do now is we're going to find out how to do it. Now, my story is well and truly not over because I'm, here's my theory. Are you ready? And take it on board if you're excited about life. Fabulous at 50. Sexy at 60. Sensational at 70, awesome at 80, never give up at 90, happy and healthy at 100 plus. How does that sound? Yeah. Yes, it sounds great. Now, I just want to share this is just a quick private moment with you. I haven't been to Perth for 11 years. I worked out today. The last time I was in Perth 11 years ago, I did the exact run that I did this morning. Now, I don't like running for an hour anymore because I've got a 50-year-old body. But this morning, I took on the challenge and thought, 11 years ago, I'm going to do the exact same run that I did 11 years ago and see how long it took me. Guess how long it took me? 59.9, 59 seconds. 59 minutes and 59 seconds. Because I forced myself to come in one second faster. Because <laughs> I took on the challenge. I'm asking you to do the same. I want your life to be amazing. Do you want to know how? Are you ready? It's the A, B, C, D, E of having an awesome life. Now, I'm sure you figured this out already. Do you reckon that a lousy, sticking, miserable, grumpy, bullying, criticising, negative attitude will get you anywhere? No. Well, it will. It really will. It'll attract other negative, bullying, criticising, horrible, nasty people into your life. You'll all get to hang out together. How does that sound? <laughs> Good. Get the hell out of my life because I don't want you in it. People with great attitudes get promoted. They earn more money. They get better positions. They have better friends. They have better opportunities in their life. No one wants to hang out with somebody that's got a lousy, sticky, rotten attitude. So when somebody smiles at you, if you get an opportunity to get up and dance, or you get an opportunity to get up and sing, what are you going to do? Yes! I love you guys. West Australia rocks. You so get it. Now, one of the challenges I've got, though, is people say to me, yeah, but Rowie, how do you be happy all the time? Well, I'm going to share with you how. The next challenge you're going to take on from today is I need to change the names of the days of the week because a lot of people are grumpy just because it's Monday. Have you noticed? Yeah? So get ready and join in when you're ready. It goes like this. May your Mondays be magical. May your Tuesdays be terrific. May your Wednesdays be very wow. I'm writing wow with my body. May your Thursdays be thankful. May your Fridays be a fun day. May your Saturdays be super with 70 O's. May your Sundays be sparkly. Because you choose them to be. Now notice what happens here. This is a strategy. This is a business strategy for having a happy life. You ready? On Monday, when somebody says, how are you, what are you going to say? Fantastic. I'm magical. It's Monday. On terrific day, when somebody says, how are you, they're going to say, how are you? It's Tuesday. You're going to say, I'm infecting people with my terrificness today. I want you to try that on one time at the supermarket. 
I'm a terrific dummy. You go through the checkout, the person at the checkout's going to say to you, how are you today? And you're going to say, I'm infecting people with my terrificness today. <laughs> and they're going to say, lunatic at checkout seven. <laughs> and that's awesome. Because everyone will smile in the supermarket and you'll have a great time. I'm wow day. And do this in your chair because it's a real kinesthetic thing. Right wow with your bum. Go, W, R, O, R, W. So on wow day, how are you? Some of you are looking at me like this. I'm not writing wow with my ass, miss. <laughs> well, don't. And miss out on the wow experience. Thankful day is really important to me, particularly because of this morning. When you wake up on thankful day, oi, 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 when you wake up on thankful day, um, sometimes people say to me, and I have to share this other private moment with you, people say to me, Rowie, how can you now be all the time? People say that to me all the time. Like, first thing I always say is, what's the alternative? I'm going to be grumpy? No. Thankful day was yesterday, but this morning on fun day, I woke up really thankful anyway. I looked in the mirror this morning, this is really funny. I'm all for fun and looking in the mirror. On the plane last night, there was on an air blowing on my face or something. I woke up this morning and my eyes were so puffy I couldn't open my eyes. Like my eyes were literally closed. So when I looked in the mirror, I just burst out laughing. I went, oh my goodness, what is that? <laughs> Luckily, the beautiful people at this hotel have ice. So I got some ice and put it on my face. And laughed again. Now, here's what happens when you laugh. Because most people would be quite upset if they couldn't open their eyes. You just want to... And you can hear I've got a little crackle in my voice. Well, when I woke up this morning, I was probably what most people would call sick. Well, I don't believe in being sick. I don't have time for that. So I looked myself in the mirror, even though I couldn't look at myself, and I said, we're not sick today, there's no way. We're, we're going to chat to some year nines today, so pull yourself together. So we had a cold shower, and we had a run, and we got some ice on our face, and we're all sorted. Couldn't you do that too? Yeah. However, here's what I was thankful for. There are people that wake up every morning and can't see anything. Yes or no? Yeah. So I was so thankful this morning for my puffy eyes because we could see. Do you know women whinge at me about having fat legs? Do you know how many women, I've been a fitness professional all of my life, do you know how many women whinge at me about having fat legs? Here's what I say, you've got legs. Adam, how many people have you met that don't have any? How many people do you know? So that is in a wheelchair. Whenever you whinge and whine about anything, here's what I want you to do. I want you to say thank you for my heart that's breathing. And thank you that it's thankful day. And when you wake up on thankful day, what are you going to say? Yay, it's thankful day. Just say it. Yay. Yay. It's thankful day. What's today? Fun day. What's tomorrow? Super day. With how many O's? 70. And what's the next day? Sparkly day, because you choose it to be. Join in. Four, three, two, one. May your Mondays be magical. May your Tuesdays be terrific. May your Wednesdays be very wow. And your Thursdays be thankful. May your Fridays be a fun day. May your Saturdays be super. May your Sundays be sparkly, because you choose them to be. You like it? Yeah. Okay, so that's called attitude. I want to show you this picture. This is my puppy dog called Wrinkles. <laughs> I'm five dogs. I want you to check out the size of his ears. He doesn't have ears, he's got valves. <laughs> and this is why. When I got my beautiful dog, about the first or second day I got him, here's what my mother said to me. Why did you get such an ugly dog? Don't worry about it. He just closed off his little valves and didn't listen. <laughs> He's got this amazing ability to just not hear what is negative. January this year, the vet said, Wrinkles has got cancer, he's going to die. And this morning, my husband, or yesterday morning, he sent me the video today, we talked about it. This morning, Wrinkles is running around the garden with the four other dogs, peeing on the trees and having a wonderful time. Because when the vet said, you're going to die, guess what he did? Oops. <laughs> Closed off the bowels and didn't listen. Now, you all know people like that that have had terrible news given to them and they've just decided they're not going to die. But what did we decide before? We're all going to die, aren't we? Yeah. It's how we live that's important. And he's still running around and he's still eating food with passion and enthusiasm, which I'm just going to quickly add for those of you who ever sit down to a beautiful meal or a beautiful piece of chocolate cake. This is what I find really sad. Here's what women say to me. I shouldn't be eating this. It's got so many calories in it. It's going to make me fat. 
I say, well, don't eat it then. <laughs> Nobody forces you to eat food, yes or no? But if you choose to eat a piece of chocolate cake, how should you eat it? With what kind of attitude should you eat a piece of cake? Enjoy it. Thoroughly enjoy it. And the same when you go for an exercise session. You don't go with the grumpy, I've got to burn calories, I've got to lose weight. I see those people. I saw some this morning on the river. I smile, hi, how are you going? And they're doing this. Leave me alone, I'm burning calories. <laughs> well, that's not a good attitude, is it? What kind of attitude do you have about eating and exercise? Big, happy, positive one. Just say, yes, row it. Big, happy, positive one. <laughs> this is Giorgio. Uh, she was uh, tied up for five days with no food and no water. I know that because the guy went away for five days and just left her there. So I took her. Wouldn't you? She said, lives at our house now. <laughs> She's beautiful. And I'm asking every single person in this room to be beautiful. Because be the, so what's the first one? There's ABC to here to have a great life. What's the first one? <laughs> now I need you to be beautiful. Now the girls get this. The girls want to be beautiful. What you don't get as a girl though, is that you already are. Because you look different to everybody else. Which is a big message. Don't try and look like somebody else. Don't try and dress like somebody else. Don't try and be in fashion. I want you to have your own style because you're beautiful exactly the way you are. Now the men in the room probably don't want to be called beautiful. Until you hear this, you ready? I'm looking at you for a reason. Ready? <laughs> what a beautiful man. <laughs> Wouldn't you love somebody to say that about you? What a beautiful man. Now the girls in the room get exactly what I just said. Because beauty doesn't come from the outside and you all have met really physically attractive people who are really ugly, haven't you? Because they're ugly people. Take this on board. If you're writing notes, I write this down. There are plenty of good looking people who aren't happy. You've met them, haven't you? They're really good looking but they're not very happy. I've met plenty of them. However, happy people are always good looking. Just put a smile on your dial, will you? Because no one, no one can stop you from smiling. And those of you that really want to annoy the people that are trying to hurt you, pull you down, bully you, give you a challenge in your life, just stick a smile on your dial and it annoys the hell out of them. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to spend about seven and a half minutes on how to be beautiful for the rest of your life, inside and outside. So how to be healthy, fit and strong. And I didn't say, this is very important, I didn't say ripped, buffed and shredded. Because I'm from the fitness profession and most people think, oh, she's going to talk about fitness, so it's all about having a six pack. No, it's not. It's about being healthy, about being fit and being strong. Does that sound good? No. Now, what I'm going to share with you doesn't cost any money. You don't have to buy a peel, a potion, a powder or go on a program or join the gym. Does that sound good? No. The teachers are going, thank God she's not going to try and sell them anything. <laughs> I am. I'm going to try and sell you on the most important thing in your life, which is your own body. Now, the part of the story that I didn't tell you was at the age of, it was 10 years ago, so just under 40, uh, I got a telephone call from A Current Affair, the television show, and they said, Rowie, it's Peter Stephan over here from A Current Affair, we want to come and do a story on you, and I said, that's nice. I do want to share with you, however, that I had been told my whole life that I couldn't be successful in business in particular. One, because I was a woman. Plenty of people said that to me. You can't be successful because you're a woman. You definitely can't be successful. You're, you're a woman with blonde hair. <laughs> you can't be successful because you don't have a tertiary education, because I never went to university. And you can't be successful because you come from a suburb in Sydney called Campbelltown. Does anybody know Campbelltown? I don't know what the equivalent is in Perth. Uh, but if I say in Sydney to a group of business people that I'm from Campbelltown, they kind of look at me like this. It's like a... Do you know how many people said to me, you can't be successful because you come from a low socioeconomic suburb? Do you know how many schools I go to now in low socioeconomic suburb areas where the year nines are already saying to me, oh, Rowie, but we're from a low socioeconomic suburb? I'll stop it. So I've been told, you're a woman, you've got blonde hair, you're from Campbelltown, you don't have a tertiary education, and you're a fitness instructor. You can't be successful. That's a job you have when, when you don't have a real job, which my dad said to me. You are never going to be successful as a fitness instructor. You're meant to be a lawyer. So Peter Stephan Novi calls me and he says, Rowie, we're going to come do, do a story on you. You're one of the richest people in Australia under the age of 40. 
Come on, that's cool. And I said, I appreciate that. Because I said to him, why me? Why are you doing a story on me? Because there was plenty of people on the BRW Young Witch List. And he said, well, here's why we want to do some story on you, Robbie. Because you're a woman. <laughs> You've got blonde hair. You're from Campbelltown. You don't have a tertiary education. And most importantly, you have a career path that nobody takes seriously. Because nobody takes fitness instructors seriously. Personal trainers, that's, you know, you become a doctor, not a personal trainer. Well, what I want to share with you today is this is all about attitude. When you have the right attitude and when you're a beautiful person, you'll become successful in whatever you want to do. Got it? They said to me, Rowie, how did this work out for you? And I said, well, healthy, fit and strong. When you're healthy, fit and strong and you have a strong body and a strong mind, what can you do? So, how do you get beautiful? You ready? Here's the first step. Be happy. Sing with me, because it's a song, of course. Be happy, be happy, sing. Be happy, be happy, be happy, stop. <laughs> Did I say be happy when it's not raining? Did I say be happy when your boyfriend's talking to you? Did I say be happy when you pass your exams? Did I say be happy when you're having a nice day? No. When did I say be happy? Just be happy all the time, regardless. And who gets to choose? See, is that hard? Does it cost any money? No. Good. Sing with me. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. And drink more water till you... I can't hear you. And now, see, the blokes think it's cool. Oh, we're singing about we, that's good. The girls are going, nah, I'm not going to do that. Um, this is, let's put this all into perspective. Uh, your brain cells are 90, 80 to 90% fluid, and your muscles are 60 to 70% fluid. So if you are dehydrated, what does your brain control? Which part of your body does your brain control? Everything you do is controlled by your brain. So if it is dehydrated, how will you be functioning? Crappy. <laughs> I can't put it any other way. If you, are, if you do any kind of sport, any kind of activity, or if you just want to jump out of bed in the morning, that requires muscle activity, yes? yes. And if you are dehydrated, how will your muscles be feeling? Blah. Crappy. Exactly. Now, next question. How long can you live without exercise? Because people in my profession always talk about the importance of food and exercise. How long can you live without exercise? Most people, they that their whole life and they don't do any exercise. Now, you might not get there, but there are people who don't do any exercise. So you can live without exercise. How long can you live without food? The current record is 100 days. Now, I'm asking you not to try and break that record. <laughs> But somebody has gone 100 days without food, so you could go quite a while without any food. How can you go without water? Maximum three days and you'll be what? Dead. You'll be dead. Is it important to drink water? Yes. Now, when you go to the bathroom and you have a look down, see, people in my profession will tell you you have to drink eight litres, uh, eight glasses or two litres, or you have to drink water out of a uh, Fijian spring at the back end of the countryside or from France, or don't drink water out of a bottle, or it's got to be uh, filtered. Here's a story. If you go to the bathroom and you've got long, sticky, short, sticky tinkle, what do you need to do? Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Sing with me. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Drink more water till you've got clear wheeze. Now, here's my leadership story. It's my favourite story of all time. I do this a lot, what I'm doing today with you guys. I feel like it's, and I do it as my gift back to the world. I'm here today because I love you and I know that you don't get that. But for me, I want to hang out with more positive people, so that's why I'm here today, to make sure that you're positive. So I'm in the supermarket on the Gold Coast. I'm just pushing my trolley along, singing my little happy song that I do when I do my grocery shopping. This man comes up to me, I've never met him before. He's got great hair and what I call mature lines on his face. He says, you. I've got long clear wheeze because of you. Yeah. Come on, that's a pretty cool start to any conversation. <laughs> and I'm asking you as a leader to want to have more of those conversations. So I looked at him with a huge big smile on my face and I said, Sir, that's awesome. Tell me about that. <laughs> and he said this, this is your leadership story and your challenge. He said, you came to my son's school, primary school, and you shared with him the importance of having long clear weeds. So he's come home. Everyone at our house, we've got our name on the gold star chart. And every time at our house, if someone has a long clear weed, we get a gold star. <laughs> you know what he said? I'm winning. <laughs> Don't you love that when a 
mature man in a, superma- in a supermarket puts his arms up and says, I'm winning because I'm tickling long and clear. <laughs> That's so awesome. So I'm asking you to take on that challenge. I'm asking the teachers in the room, in your staff room, there would be a gold star chart, would there be? Yes, of course. Is that complicated? Just drink more water to your blood clear It's easy, isn't it? Is this for free? Water in Perth tastes great. I love that I drank a big amount this morning. Sing with me, please. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Eat more stuff. You know this already. You're smart people. I know that you know this. And you also know that if you just eat takeaway food and things that come in a packet or a bag or out of a bright, shiny building, that you probably won't feel that good. You already know that, don't you? Yep. But if I ask you, why do you need to eat more fruit and vegetables? You're going to say this, because I know the answer. I'm from the fitness profession. Because there's vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals, and they're good for you. Yes or no? We all know that, don't we? Yeah? Well, me, I'm not a fan of the vegetable. I don't particularly like them. I don't mind a deep fried potato. (laughs) However, I love vegetables. But I'm asking you to do the same, and here's the reason why. When you eat more stuff that comes out of the ground, you will poo more often. (laughs) You heard me. (laughs) I said poo. P-O-O. Now, there's a really important reason I'm sharing this with you. I wish that when I was in year nine and an overweight little girl, that somebody had come to my school and said, Rowie, are you pooing two times every day? Because I would have said no. I was on all kinds of diets to try and lose weight, which means I wasn't pooing. See, poo is good or bad. It's bad stuff that your body needs to get rid of. It's all the rubbish inside your body. Do you want rubbish inside or out of your body? Out. Now, there's another thing you have to take away from today. I'm going to poo, just say this, I'm going to poo two times every day because I'm going to eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Do you know how many times? Yes. And it's going to slide out easily. What? <laughs> the guys are going, this is such a cool conversation. I want you to do this. What? Just make the sound. What? <laughs> Got it? Now, for the girls in the room, if you are not convinced that this is important, you're all intelligent, you already know it's important, but just in case you're not convinced, if you want to feel light and healthy and, and I'm going to say less fat, because when I wasn't pooing all the time, I used to have this bloated tummy and I just felt really uncomfortable. When you poo two times every day, you just feel lighter and fresher and happier and thinner. How good's that? For the blokes in the room, pay attention, please. One in three men who die of cancer die of bowel or colon cancer. That's because when you go to the bathroom, you're doing this, because it's not good. I had a, when I was a personal trainer, I had a client. His name was Matt, not this Matt, a different Matt. And I said to him, as you would with all the people in your life that you care about and all of your friends, you would ask them how many times are you pooing? You would, wouldn't you, if you cared? You would, wouldn't you? So I said, Matt, how many times are you, do you poo? And he said, some days. He didn't say sparkle day, he said Sunday. I take the newspaper into the bathroom and hope that something happens. Is this good? Just say no, Rowie, this is not good. <laughs> he would be a prime candidate for bowel or colon cancer, so we got him to do what? Eat more stuff that comes out of the ground, eat more stuff that comes out of the ground. Pretty easy, isn't it? Who's that guy? About, I think it's 36 days now, he's going to be having another crack at the. 100 metres, fastest man in the world. Now, what's his last name? It's not you saying walk, is it? His last name's Bolt. And all I want you to do now is put four fingers up and puff really fast. (laughs) Four times, go. (laughs) And the reason is this. This is my inspiration. So as I'm sharing this information with you, I need you to use that as, as inspiration. He runs for 9.54 seconds and he gets really puffed like he can't breathe anymore. (gasps) So how long does it take him to get puffed? 9.54 seconds. Everybody stand up. I don't have exercise shoes on and it doesn't make any difference. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to sprint on the spot, keep your feet close to the ground, go flat out. Go. Go. Fast. Faster. Go. Go, 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 go. Stop. Sit down. That's it, finished. Now we didn't go for a walk, did we? What did we do? We went for a bolt. <laughs> See, I used to think that to ex- if I wanted to exercise, I had to go for hours. Like I had to run along, along the Perth River for hours. It's pretty and all that. 
But here's the, here's the exercise physiology facts. You ready? To get fit, you have to get puffed. Write it down. To get fit, you have to get puffed. <laughs> How long does it take to get puffed? Not even 9.54 seconds. Now, the reason we stopped is that everybody was breathing deeper. Those of you that put an effort in were actually getting puffed. Now, you ready? This is very exciting news. Fit people burn fat faster. Fit people burn fat faster. This is even more exciting news. Fit people are fat burning machines. Have a look. Fit people are fat burning machines. How long does it take to get puffed? 9.54 seconds. Now, in this room today, this is really exciting. All the fit people got puffed really quickly. And all the unfit people got puffed really quickly. Everybody gets puffed quickly, it doesn't matter. So your exercise program only needs to be really short, about 10 seconds. How does that sound? Now the only difference between the fit people and the unfit people is the really fit people, they, you exercise flat out for 10 seconds, got really puffed, and about a second later you were recovered. The unfit people took a little bit longer to get their breath back. That's the only difference. You don't have to exercise for hours, and if you love to exercise for hours, go for it. But most people don't. 90% of the, the world's population, the Western world, doesn't do any exercise at all. So you're going to go home today, say to your mum and dad, guess what? This really funny looking little lady with short blonde hair came to our school event today and she said we only have to do 40 seconds of exercise every day. And they're going to say, that's not enough. Or they're going to say, wow, what if it is? <laughs> what if you got the whole world to have a great attitude? They were happy. They drank more water until they had clear weeds, ate more stuff that comes out of the ground, got puffed four times a day. Would the world be a better place? Just say, yes, Rowie. Yes, Rowie. This is our last one. This is my favourite photo. Because every time I have a sore knee or a sore hip or something hurts, I always think about this photo. You have to be strong. You as a human being, I don't care if everybody around you is weak, you have to be strong. Now, if the world pushes you down, gives you a challenge, wants to hold you down, is mean, nasty or horrible to you, if the world wants to push you over and you're a strong person, one of two things will happen. What are they? You'll fall over, but you will. You'll get straight back up. Or if someone tries to push you over and you're really strong, what will happen? You won't fall over. So you've got to be strong. Now here's a really important thing. My profession will often tell you that you've got to go to the gym and you've got to do three sets of ten and you've got to do 27 exercises and it costs a lot of money and it takes a long time and it's really boring and I'm boring myself just telling you about it. embarrassing wouldn't it so better get yourself strong have you got a floor yeah. yeah unless you live in space you've got a floor so you can do push-ups and if you hang off the monkey bar and try and pull yourself back up again you don't need a piece of gym equipment if you pull yourself up on the monkey bars you're going to get strong and if you can do push-ups you're going to get strong and if you do jump squats you're going to get strong and that takes about three minutes so you've got an exercise program that's 40 seconds every day to get puffed i'm talking fast for a reason <laughs> and about three exercises to get your whole body strong does that sound good Yes. Now that's going to take some courage. For me that's taken a lot of courage because that's completely against my entire profession. Do you think it took a little bit of courage to stand up on stage in front of 450 people who hated me to say yes, Rowie? Yes, I don't care if you're scared to ask that girl out. I don't care if you're scared of your upcoming exam. I don't care if you're scared of life. Get courageous, which means be scared and what? Do it anyway. Now, there's a young guy in Adelaide two days ago he said, yes, because of your talk, there's this girl that I've been wanting to ask out, now I've got the courage to do it. <laughs> what a great day. <laughs> discipline. You all in this room, you're all really smart. You know what to do. This is the definition of discipline, is to do what you should do, when you should do it, even if you don't feel like it. Now, you all know what to do. And you know when you should do it. For example, you all know that you need to study for an exam, yes or no? Yes. Yes. And when should you study? Do not say the night before. We all know that that is not the good time to study. We know that we know what to do, we should study, and yes, we should study before the exam. However, if you don't feel like it, you might not. Once a year I run a marathon, and it's really cool because I've been running the same speed for the last about 20 years. And every time I run a marathon, just once a year I do it to test my mental toughness. 
And there is always a time when you run 42.2 kilometres, if you've never done that before, imagine it. If you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. There's always a time during those 42.2 kilometres that I want to stop. It's hard. It's tough. I'm tired. My muscles hurt. Discipline is every step that you take after you want to stop. Discipline is doing what you should do, when you should do it, even if you don't feel like it. That's the fastest car in the world. It's also the most expensive car in the world. And I love it. And not because it's a car. I love it because it's the best in the world. So I've got another challenge for you. If you want to be a bus driver, and no one else in the world wants you to be a bus driver, but you're really keen to be a bus driver because you love buses, what kind of bus driver are you going to be? The best bus driver that ever existed. If you want to be a hostess on a plane, a air steward, there's lots of them in the world. Some of them are really average and some of them are great. If you want to be an air steward, what kind are you going to be? The best. best in the world. When you wrap that up with respect in the history of today, I feel it. I don't have to talk about this today because I know that you know what respect is. It's treating yourself with respect and everybody else. And I can see that you don't understand what that means. When that's what's going on in your life, and somebody says to you, you can't be successful, you're a woman, you've got blonde hair, you're from Campbelltown. You can't have a great life. If somebody ever says that to you, if a little girl comes to you and says, is it possible to be healthy, fit and strong, to have a career that I love and change the world? You're going to say, hell yes. Thanks for having me today.